<laughs> Hi, everyone. Today, I've got a different interview. So I've been doing a lot of interviews recently, basically because I'm seeing that a lot of the information on the internet is probably not as qualified or as good as you should be receiving. So I've been reaching out to some of the smartest people I know in the industry about uh, Google Ads, feeds, analytics, and now today we're going to be talking about SEO. Now, I don't tend to talk about SEO or even do it myself, but I know how important SEO or organic rankings are for businesses because when organic rankings are going extremely well, the advertising seems to as well. And then when the advertising is going well, it feeds back into the SEO or the organic as well. So today I'm having a chat with Ernesto Ortiz. Uh, Ernesto and I work together, not we are between clients. So we've, we met through a client and then we've just been working with a lot of clients together. And realistically, it's because we both deliver results. So it's been so easy to work together because we're both very similar in the approach of we're both very analytical. We're both very no BS people and uh, we just want to get the results for clients. So Ernesto and I were having a chat last night. I just gave him a call because I just wanted to call him about something. And I said, let's have a chat on a, do a podcast episode or a recorded interview because he was saying some things to me that were mind blowing to me. And I think now in the day and age where everyone's talking about AI and SEO and all these new tricks, they talk about this stuff and you want to believe it because you're always looking for the hack. But Ernesto is someone who's on the front lines doing the work daily. He's not like an agency, he's an individual working with big clients, small clients and seeing how the landscape works. So this is direct from the source someone who's actually doing it and someone seeing the impact of using AI. So I want to introduce Ernesto Ortiz. Ernesto, how are you going, mate? Hi, I'm good. How about you? I'm good. I'm good. You know, it's uh, coming up to 10 a.m. on a Wednesday morning. So we're hitting the halfway through the uh, week point. So life's good. So, yeah. mate, I want to just go <clears throat> into it straight away. So I'm going to just preface people, Ernesto is amazing at SEO. If you ever need someone or advice on SEO, reach out to him. But today, let's get to the meat of this. So let's talk about AI and SEO. What are the biggest issues that you've seen? You've heard of people talking about it. You've seen people do it. What are you seeing with AI and SEO now? It's like the new kid on the block. Um, but it's just, you know, it's been a while. It's, it's been around for a while. Um, and just as anything in SEO, people, uh, overdo it. And that's definitely what's happened with AI. People just creating so much content so quickly with it. Um, and you know, the, the AI content, it's sort of like a good first draft, but you sort of, it's not really that good enough to put it out there right away. Um, and people are just, yeah. are just taking the easy route, um, and really just printing out pages um one with one click right um and it works for a while um they they get lots of traffic and whatnot um and then eventually google sort of catches up and the site loses all the rankings and some of them even get de-indexed um basically you can't find them in google anymore like they, they just take it out of the index um, so it's pretty wild um you can you can use it carefully and and make it you know speed up your process or you can just be lazy, just do a lot of it, um, bank for a while, um, but then you get caught. And if you're doing that with clients, well, you're going to tank their business. So that's not fun. Because got to, <laughs> yeah. So have you, you be yeah, because it's, you were mentioning last night that, you know, if you, there's, well, firstly, the fundamentals are there's, content SEO, and then there's more like the technical SEO. And a lot of people tend to go down the content route because it's non developy non-technical. They just think they post articles. So this tends to be exploited and probably mostly around the content SEO. But you're also mentioning that because it's writing SEO based on whatever's uh, available on the internet, you're not actually coming up with better content. It's actually just like a filtered down, watered down version of what's already out on the internet. Like, what are your thoughts on that? And what were you yeah. saying about that? Yeah, it's exactly that. So AI is, you know, trained on, on information and now you can feed it URL. So you can, you know, you can feed it the information that you want really. 
Um, but it just, it doesn't have inherent knowledge in the sense that it doesn't create new knowledge. It doesn't read something and make a conclusion. It just uses what's already out there. So there's never going to be anything new. And the only way that you can create a better piece of content with AI is by mixing different sources that are difficult to access, which probably the AI doesn't have access. So you've got to research, find them and give it to them. And then the AI will put them together. So you're sort of like curating, right? You're just grabbing the information from different pieces and you're putting it all in one piece um, that you couldn't find before. So that's a bit better for the user, but you still have to, yeah. there's lots of manual process in that. Um, and you have to guide it. And you, you have to know what you're asking it to do. What people get wrong is they just say, hey, do this. And it spits out, it's going to spit out the same thing for everyone that asks the same question. Yeah. So the internet's, if you just look at lots of Google results, they already say the same thing. So if you train something on on, on documents that already say the same thing, and that's what it does, you're just, just going to end up on every single page is going to say the same. Um, yeah. And there's no added value to it. But for people that think, oh, we just publish content, um, they most of them just replace their copywriters, right? And the cost yeah. per article just went down dramatically, like an insane amount. Um, AI doesn't get sick, doesn't have days off. You know, it can do unlimited articles a week. Not like a copywriter, you blow their head off, like their, their brain explodes if you ask them too many articles every week. Um, so people just took advantage of that. Um, and, and yeah, now they're probably facing the, the consequences of it. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it's just interesting that Google is cracking down on these. They, they can tell when someone's probably doing it because they're posting new content regularly on their website that it's unoriginal, it's sourcing things. And uh, there's obviously for a while, Google and other platforms have actually had they know when something's written by AI. I even notice when I'm on LinkedIn and someone's posted something that's AI or someone's posting a comment on one of my posts and I'm like, this isn't written by a human. This is generated by <laughs> machine. Like you just copied it and write, like write a response. So it seems like I'm engaged with their content. So yeah. what do you think is the consequence of all of this now? Like over the next few months, people who have been using it thinking they can get a leg up what do you think is going to be the consequence? Do you think a lot of people will be fine if they keep abusing AI to write content? Or do you think it's a really big red flag and a risk and, you know, their website could be um, de-indexed? What are your thoughts? I think the beauty of this question is it's not like there's thoughts or ideas. It's what's happening. It's actually happening now. Um, okay, cool. So it's pretty, it's pretty easy to see. Um, so there's one group of people that, you know, they create a lot of content, they monetize it maybe through display ads or affiliate links or whatnot. And they, they make, they bank for a while, they make money for a while. Um, yeah. And their goal is to make, to try to recover the money they spend on the AI articles before Google catches them and tanks the website. So that's one yeah. type of people. They've always existed. Um, it's a bit more what we call black hat SEO. That's just full on outside every guideline. Um, yeah. And, and and that's like a group of people that will always do that. Um, and then there's the people who yeah. might want to like try to try to take advantage of the new technology and maybe without being careful enough and without anticipating the risk, they, they could get caught anyway. Um, yeah. It's up for debate if Google can actually tell what is AI content. Um, like just, just, this is like a lot of people really don't like hearing this, but it's the truth. Like Google can't read. It still can't read. It, it makes sense of what's going on by looking at words that are together and it tries to classify a page around the subject because of the words that are in it and, and the context of the other words that are surrounding it, give it, um, you can still rank pages in lorem ipsum that is gibberish like a made up yeah. thing with the right words in the right places you can still rank that you can still rank white page like white text on white background you can still rank um empty pages just with schema that's a piece of code that that 
is not visible to the user. So Google is mm. still, it's, it's very advanced, but it's still very primitive in a lot of ways. So it's not really clear that they can detect as a human AI content. Like we read our LinkedIn comments and it's like, that, yeah. that's just AI comment, right? Like it's not, yeah. it wasn't written yes. by someone. It's, it's not that easy for a bot to, to figure that out. And what they, what they seem to be doing is like looking at many other factors. Um, and they're trying to say, okay, websites that abuse AI have these characteristics. So this is all speculation on how they do it, right? But for example, if you show up with 10,000 pages the next day, that's, it's really hard to believe. And you do that every day. It's really hard that that was a human effort. Yeah. So you probably get flagged and, and then someone like that website gets flagged and someone might check it and see, okay, this is definitely AI. And, and they yeah. try to do it that way. They try to do it with other factors that are, that are common to websites that, that have this behavior. It's not like, yeah. I think they necessarily have an accurate AI detection tool or that AI copywriting output has a watermark that they can check. Um, yeah. And how they, how they define it, it's hard to, you know, it's just speculation for now. Um, but the problem with, with the approach that they did, that it's so basic that a lot of uh, spammy websites got taken down and de-indexed, but also a lot of good websites that were doing everything right got 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 in trouble too um just because mm. they had these similar characteristics and it's a machine learning thing that's in its infancy and it didn't do the job right and there's just so many people that um that were impact that didn't have to you know like th there's a dude that you know like a travel blog he went to some place in peru um had an article ranking for that for ages because he was the only one that went there Lots of other websites took the images that he took personally from his wife uh, in the place, put them on their articles, wrote the same thing, like rehashed out of his, he was the only unique thing. And he went from position yeah. one to disappearing and all the other people that just basically just use his content and his images and everything, they're there. Wow. So that guy so was doing a good was... job and he just got caught by this primitive machine learning algorithm. And, and got done. So he was doing things right and he got caught and people who do just nasty stuff, um, they might or might not get caught. So it's like, it's the wild west at the moment. <laughs> yeah. And what does someone do if they their site gets deranked or de-indexed because of false, you know, false AI detection? But what would you it do if someone be... came to you? And they said that? It, it, it it used to be that you had to, you had to fix all the obvious things. So this, when your site gets hit by Google, there's usually two ways, a manual penalty, which means an individual from Google put a flag on your, on your website and said, there's something wrong with this website or an algorithmic penalty. That is when you just start seeing rankings drop at a higher rate than normal. Um, yeah. And it used to be that you went, if there's a manual penalty, it says why you have it. So you can address those things. And some people have recovered um, websites, meaning they're indexed again and stuff like that, just by, for example, deleting all their AI blogs. Yeah. But if they had, let's say they had a thousand AI blogs and a hundred human written blogs, there's this guy that, that that's just did a video a couple of days ago about this. He, he deleted all his AI blogs, but left some human written blogs and Google denied his request for lifting the penalty. Um, oh, wow. and it's, and, and it's like, yeah, they actually can't tell. So he's probably going to have to delete the whole blogs, all of them, yeah. um, and, and try to get it out there. Um, and the recovery from a penalty is very so much. It can take a cup. It can take till the next. Google algorithm update, let's say four months or something like that, or it can take a couple of years. Um, wow. No one has, there's not a lot of cases of websites that have recovered after the algorithm update in September, almost none. And this one now, it's still early because it's still happening, 
but we still haven't no one's been posting real recovery cases out there it's like wow. i think these these websites that get hit it's going to take a long time to recover probably more than a year wow and if you're a, if you're if a business you're... and and your rankings tank for a year that's hard to deal with you can actually go yeah. dark depending yeah. on how dependent you were on that channel and is there any source to contact Google to get support on this? Or is this one of those things that you're just hitting? You're just <laughs> yeah, but it's like when you deal, it's yeah. like, it's, it's like what you're dealing with, you know, like Google support and, and like, yeah. it's, yeah, yeah, it's not, you, you'll never talk to a human, like you just submit. Free. Yeah. Cause I suppose because SEO yeah. or doing organic is free, Google don't make money off it. That why would they invest resources of people and time when they've got ads which is already underfunded ads being the underfunded the service and you're getting billions a day off that and then yeah. you've got seo where you're making nothing and you're getting people just trying to not run ads essentially the, so, the way that yeah. i see seo from the business point of view for them is they need good search results because yeah. if if you don't get good search results people won't use the platform and if people don't use the platform, you can't sell ads to them. Yeah. So there is value that like they, they put a lot of effort in trying to provide good content when people search for whatever they're searching. Um, but they're not getting in right this time. Um, mm. And it's, yeah, this is crazy. Like everyone's quite, <laughs> quite surprised about what's going on. And um, yeah. It's still developing, so, but um, it's crazy. What do people do? What's your recommendation? So obviously we work together on clients and I'm seeing outstanding results consistently. And we actually met through a client because you were a you were the SEO person, but also the digital marketing manager and we were linked up. So you were actually a yeah. client of mine and we've worked yeah. together on numerous clients. I've seen outstanding results. But someone who's watching this, who's either a specialist or their owner, who might be like, oh, maybe I should do AI. It doesn't seem like what you're saying is the risk is not worth the reward. So what are your recommendations for this new modern age of AI and SEO? And you know, your company is literally called Structural SEO. So you're more on the structural technical side. What are your recommendations for people to actually get better results? Is it that you do need to hire a specialist? Is it that don't try to you know, undercut Google and do AI? Like, what are your recommendations for people? I think you can use AI. So just on the AI side, you can use it as an assistant. So if you want mm. to get ideas, cool. If you want to rewrite a title, cool. Um, if you want to get a first draft, um, if you wanted to read a document, it's really good at processing information. So you give it a document and ask it for give me all the facts that are in here or a summary and it, it will do that. Yeah. So speed up the process. What you really should stay away from is publishing articles with one click, you know, yes. even, yeah. even pub, even if you have an outline and you write and you want to write each section of the outline separately, I find that that's still not enough. Yeah. And because what you'll get is you'll get the same thing that's out there, maybe organized in a different way. And what you should yeah. definitely try to do is just add more information to it, whether it's more facts, um, so personal experience, a different angle, but AI content, it needs heavy human editing um, just for that yeah. reason. Just on the, if you go to the basic principles on how it works, it just takes information that's out there and just, it's like spinning content. It's not creating anything. Yeah. Um, so I would be yeah. careful with that. Um, GPT-5 is coming out now in a month or two months or something like that. So things can change. But yeah, I understand the, the, the fundamentals of how it works should be the same. So it might yeah. write a less, um, like a more engaging text, but you still got to be careful with it. And regarding the other stuff, you just got to be very, this is mostly what I do with every client that comes in. Um, you just got to make sure that Google can understand what your website is about and that it can actually crawl it properly without using yeah. additional resources. 
the easier it is for Google to understand what your website is about and for easier it is to crawl it and understand the relationship between pages and all that, the better you'll do. It's so simple. Yeah. I'm pretty sure Google Ads is the same thing and I've heard you say this. You get the foundations right, the fundamentals, and that's like a big part of the job. And most people are fixated on, you know, the the next the last thing they heard and they they you don't even yeah. have the fundament the foundations right. Like what 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 are you thinking about this other thing? Let's fix that first. And no wonder you I do love, that and <laughs> Yeah, works. I love you saying this because people are so focused on the new thing, not the right thing. And the right thing is always the fundamentals. And the fundamentals mm -hmm. are usually things that worked five, 10 years ago that are time tested. Fundamentals yeah. are the groundwork. And if that is not, it's like trying to build a house with all these fancy rooms when you haven't got the foundation. It's the same with Google ads. This is why I'm like, people who try to learn Google ads now, like you're doomed because you're never going to understand the fundamentals because the fundamentals are not easily or readily available in Google ads or meta ads for that example, uh, or for mm -hmm. that. And I'm presuming it's the same because this is a universal principle for life and professionalism is fundamentals will always be the 80, 20. But the thing is you never hear about, you can't be marketed foundational fundamentals, even though that's what works. That's what we're paid for. Yeah. Like there yeah. are people online who are, you know, telling about all these fancy Google ads or SEO things that people would go to them. They're marketing that. And then people do that and their accounts are burnt. And then their, you know, their websites are burnt as well because the new thing is not the best thing. And um, yeah. that's why I wanted to have this chat is because I'm hearing about all these people using AI for Google ads. I'm like, how, where? And no one's telling me. They're like, yeah, use it. And then when they get down to it, it's like, it's for ad copy. I'm like, this ad copy sucks. Like, I'm not like, I've learned direct response cop copywriting from a previous company I worked at. And mm. I look at this copy and I'm like, no wonder these accounts suck. Like I pick yeah. up from people or pick up from other agencies. It's just like, it's lazy. AI should just be replaced with I'm lazy and I'm cheap <laughs> rather than being do, like, this is superior. Do you, do you feel that, especially for ads, Google ads in general, like that ad copy, the more straightforward it is and clear it is sort of like the better it works. Have you sort of seen that? Yeah. The simplest things for ad copy is actually have the keyword in the ad copy, which is someone looks for something and then having that ad copy, and then having a unique selling point rather than going where the best be like free quote or this discount. It's like keyword yeah. and really good USP is like the best uh, way to do ad copy. But I can't yeah. sell a course on that. I can't sell videos on that, but it's the truth. And like, I don't sell courses. You can't, I don't you sell can't tell a business. Stuff. You can't do a business that doesn't have a unique selling proposition to create one. So you can run the bloody ads. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And going, bringing this back to the SEO, because your company is called structural SEO. So it really is focused more on the structure, um, the technical side, and really more the, like when you're building a house, getting like the foundations done and actually getting like things properly set up. So yeah, with how you do SEO, cause you mentioned last night, it's like, we were talking about how clients, you know, they sometimes look for a Google ads and SEO specialist in one. And you even said like, no one person can be across every part of SEO because there are so many parts yeah. to it and you can only be really strong in some parts and then just good at other parts. So with you and you're a very smart person, what have you found with SEO in general for most clients or most businesses that you order audit to be the most important things? that they either get wrong most of the time or that if they just do this, focus on this most of the time, the outcomes will be positive. Yeah. Uh, like in general, and then I'll, I'll give like the overview and then a, a small example. You need to have the right pages created for you to be able to rank. You can't yeah. rank a page that doesn't exist. And some people mm. think that if they create a page about something, that they'll rank for all these different terms. And sometimes you need to create different pages around it. And e-commerce is a really good example about this because for example, let's say you're, let's say you want to rank for linen pants. Let's say you want to, <laughs> let's say you want to rank for, okay. Let's say you want to, okay. Let's use a, let's use a client as an example that we share. 
Let's, yes. They originally okay. had a page that was called bottoms. And bottoms means pants. But what pants? Does it mean long pants, shorts, three quarters, cotton pants, linen pants? What is it? Like what does what it is? So people, because they have one, like like they just think as a business, oh yeah, we create pants. We'll just have a bottoms page that's not even called pants. Um, they're going to rank for those terms. And what they don't realize is they might need a wide leg pants page. That's a certain type of bottoms. They might need a shorts page. And they might actually then need to filter down even more to linen pants or linen wide leg pants page. And because they haven't created those collection pages, those category pages, they'll never rank for them because Google knows that someone who searches for linen wide leg pants, if they show them a bottom page with every type of pants around, they're not going to be happy. They're going to bounce. Yeah. So figuring out what pages you need to create to be able to, for your products to show up, it's super important. And for services, it's mm. sort of the same thing. You can't have one page that, that offers SEO and Google ads. You probably need an SEO page offering SEO, and then you probably need another one offering Google ads because they're two different intents. It's not the same thing. Yeah. So do you think that starts off with just the psychology, understanding the psychology of the search, but also understanding the foundations of how Google works, which is Google wants to, when someone searches for something to send them to the most relevant page, because if they go to Google, search something, go to a page that's relevant, they go, Google's good. And they'll keep coming back and click on ads yeah. ultimately. But the issue is that you see is a lot of companies, even though they've got good products and services, uh, that their website is just not set up to match up clearly and concisely to what someone would search for on Google. So yeah. even though so they may have the solution to what people are looking for, they're not, um, what's the word, like putting it in a way that's easily digestible or Google can quickly go, yep, that's exactly what this person's easy to match up. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and they just think Google is smart enough and it's a bot and they don't realize that this bot has to it's not so, <laughs> so many, web but imagine the task they've got to, they've got to cover the whole internet that's full of rubbish and try to surface the 0.01% of sites that are worth anything. And, and they've got to match the user to the right result. And, you know, it's it's a hard job to do. And you've got to make it easy that, for them to do it. Um, and yes, that's just what a lot of SEO is. You just make Google's life easier. and Google rewards you. Why? Because yeah. it understands what you've got. So it shows you to the right people. Um, yeah. If someone wants to, if someone is, is thinking about, okay, I don't have good rankings or wondering about their rankings. And they have a, for example, they have a category or collection page um, about, you know, let's say the most important product range. So you can go find your most important product range, whatever you sell, that's assuming you're e-commerce or service, just do that. And type in the keyword that you think you, you're trying to rank for and see what comes up. Your page, mm. Google is showing the search intent behind that keyword. It's showing you the type of pages that it wants to rank. If all those results in the title have a very specific keyword that is not the one you've got, how is Google going to understand that your page is the same thing? Yes. If you're if if you're if you think that your homepage is going to rank for a term that Google is showing products, probably not going to work if you're, you know, or, or showing collection pages. Clothing is such a good example because you can have, let's say, uh, men's jackets or men's suits page, but that men's suits page probably won't rank for blue men's suits because yeah. someone searching for blue men's suits doesn't have to deal, doesn't want to deal with with ten different colors on that page. They they already want blue suits. So if you didn't create a blue suit page your men's suits, even if it has 50% blue suits, it's not going to do that well. So it's yeah. just about understanding that um, and doing that at scale. 
that you can that that's such an easy fix and it's i've yet haven't seen a website that can't do better with that yeah wonderful so lastly in terms of google ads and seo so we've worked on clients together that run them together and then you've definitely worked on clients who have probably not run google ads what have you seen and we haven't even talked about this before what have you seen in terms of the relationship between google ads and organic rankings or seo they're symbiotic right like it's when you have so i've worked on both sides i've worked providing um the seo service and i've worked at the marketing manager side where you have all these channels reporting to you and you've got to figure out where to you know what's important where to put your money where to put more where to put less so i see yeah. both sides of of you know i'm on both sides of it which is was quite insightful um and helps me a lot and it just seems to be that every time that seo is like a website is well optimized google ads runs slightly better you know maybe it's because the feed is better and the shopping ads are you know better from the start yeah. um and every time you're doing seo on a website that doesn't have google ads on it the results come in slower it's like a slog mm. it's, it's tough but when you've got that yeah. extra traffic coming in um whether it's by user signals or whatever it is um like the mechanism you can debate it no one can actually say why but it just happens that every single client that has a google ads running well the seo is so much easier even if they have a mess like i fix that their seo mess and whatnot but the results come in quicker than a client that doesn't have that that you know that other channel working and i'm pretty sure there's a way that social traffic also helps yeah like that, that i'm not I'm, i don't understand the mechanism well but it also happens to be <laughs> that you know whether it's because they generate more brand searches and that makes google trust that you're an actual company and not you know just whatever for some reason or not like having additional traffic sources um helps a lot yeah excellent i definitely have noticed from google ads accounts well optimized websites perform significantly better quality scores are naturally higher um mm. it just and it when you just think about old school like dynamic search ads or now performance max they they are scraping like information from the website being at like the metas descriptions meta titles the schema and all that mm. stuff like they are using that so the more technical you've done to fix the structure of your website the better the google ads will run for e like e-commerce it's like it's either with e-commerce if you don't do it you won't get results and if you do it you'll get outstanding results because with e-commerce you're getting five ten a hundred times more traffic coming through just because that's the nature of shopping versus b2b yeah. or b2c services and when you get that right it's like it compounds on itself and then it compounds because you get lower click costs more engaged people and then google can see those signals and it keeps feeding back and it's an upward spiral but even for SEO and Google ads for service-based businesses. I've seen a lot of clients who they've done outstanding SEO and they're just getting the, it seems like it's the easiest Google ads account to run. And then you run the same type of client in the same industry. Sorry. Yeah. Same type of, uh, client in the same industry and they just, nothing happens. And you realize their ranking not, is not as good. Um, quality scores are just a bit less, same keywords, same, everything, same offer. Just these small tweaks make a significant impact in the business because like ultimately it affects the account, which affects the business as well. So I just, yeah. I've just noticed that it's a lot of people like Google ads versus Facebook or Google ads versus SEO. It's all needed together. It's all essential. And yeah. if you want to make your business succeed, you need all of these services done well, because it's not one plus one or one minus one. It's like one plus one equals 10 because they do compound on each other. And you do get outsized returns, especially when you're doing it with really good people. Yeah, for and sure. Um, and, and just, just like, there's a point that I think is important that a lot of people miss. And if you Google, you know, if you're searching for something and you have ads and organic results, if the same company appears in, you know, in the shopping ads, 
in the textiles, in the organic results. Like you're, if you happen to dominate the first third of the page, obviously you're going to get better results than if you just have one yeah. of those three options. And yeah. the other thing that people sort of sometimes miss is that even though Google ads and SEO work with the same, they work from searches on Google, it's like there's people who click on ads all the time and don't click on the organic results. And there's people or less, and there's people who click way more on the organic results and don't click on the ads. And there's an overlap between them. But if you have both of them running, there's, you can't access all the clicks just through organic, even if you're ranked number one. Yeah. And you can't access all the clicks just through ads because of the nature yeah. of how people behave. So when yes. you have both running at the same time and you're doing well with both, it's like these situations where one plus one isn't two, sort of like five. Yeah, um, yeah, definitely. And we've seen that with clients before that, you know, they were running ads with a previous agency. We came in or Market Lead came in and then, we, you know, I was like, oh, the account looks okay. And then we've seen that that company's made, done millions in additional revenue. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so okay mate so this was a great chat um how can people follow you mate? um they can find me on linkedin um just type ernesto ortiz yep. seo um and i'll probably pop up um and and yeah I'll, I'll just probably think that's the best channel for them to find me and if they want to get in touch and what about structuralseo.com.au yeah, structuralseo.com.au if you want to get in touch. Um, oh, you got to pitch yourself you better. Yeah. <laughs> hey, is it Wonderful. Well, out. Ernesto, thank you so much for your time, mate. Really appreciate it and glad we're able to share this information with people. So once again, people, look up Ernesto Ortiz on LinkedIn and structuralseo.com.au. Have a wonderful day.